by any Muslim. He has basically means to stay to struggle. The Hindus and the Muslims will be united. He is not cosmic energy, he is more superior than that. Quran gives you the solution to the problem of mankind. That we shall despise each other. According to Japan, India will be the superpower of the world. We will be a superpower, we will be far superior to the Americans. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalamu rasulillah wa ala ali wa sahbihi ajmain. Amma abad. Auzu billahi minish shaitani rajim. Bismillahi rahmani rahim. Udu ila sabi rabbi gabli kma. Wal ma'adat al hasna. Wajadir mbrati hasan. Rabbi uli sadri. Wa silli amri. Wahalu al ugdata min lisani yafqahu kawli. I welcome all of you with Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace, mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. You're most welcome to ask any questions on Islam and compared religion. So if any brother says any question, they're most welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Um, brother, intentions play a very uh, important role. Uh, but uh, while doing a good deed, uh, often uh, many a thought comes to one's mind. So how to judge uh, which is your intention and how to purify one's intentions? There are the question that many times when we do good deeds, there are many intentions that come in your mind when you're doing any deeds. And many thought comes, many times of sasas come, many times of the shaitan, some good things. So how do you judge that the intentions are good or bad or the act of doing is good or bad? See, as long as the act is concerned, there are guidance in the Quran and the Sunnah about the act being done, whether it's good or bad. Now, along with this, there may be other ancillary thoughts that may come. For example, a person in Dawa, and Alhamdulillah, he's successful. And the thousands of people coming for his talk, so what's the may come? That are you doing Dawa for fame, or are you doing it for Allah's sake? And this is a question that may come in the mind of any day. And many a times, then you take a decision, seeing only actions. First hadith of Muhammad in Sahih Bukhari is, that niya is important. Your action is a judge by your niya. The niya is important. And niya is very important. But at the same time, only niya and no deed. You have to have it. The main thing is the niya. So whatever action you're doing. And with that, and there's a saying that Amge Saad Gutli when you buy the mango, you also get the seed, the big seed. You can't buy the mango without the seed. So, in a parcel, there are things that come. For example, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is the most successful human being in the world. Most successful Muslim, most successful messenger, Alhamdulillah. Yet, he also happens to be the most influential human being in the world. The most famous human being in the world. So someone can allege that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knows Billah. He did this for fame. And there are allegations. If you hear my talk in Is the Quran Word. I have given various allegations of the Orientalist and the skeptics of Islam. But when you see the other aspect of it, that what he has done, some people say that, oh, he did for money, the person done for wealth. So then allegations, when you see the other lifestyle of the Prophet, that he could have been made king by Mushrik of Makkah. And they told him that when he started doing Dawah, the Quraysh and the other tribes, the chiefs of Makkah, they said that you denounce the message of Tawheed, and will make you the king. will give you all the wealth in the world. So then he replied that even if you put the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left hand, I will not denounce my message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This aspect proves that fine, that he was not for money, for wealth, for fame. So like that, if you see the lifestyle, so if a waswasa, if a thought comes in your mind, you have to analyze it. Is it the case or not? Maybe the thought is right. Maybe unintentionally, you try doing something for fame, which is wrong. And we do make mistakes. No human being can say that he's perfect. So at that time, you'd see to it that your deed is only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. So any deed you're doing, whether da'wah, whether good work, etc., you should see the pros and cons. Then you can really analyze that, why? Is it for money? Okay, fine. If the person can do something else, they can earn more money. Is it for fame? So in this way, we should be clear in our own self. What others say, believe me, it should not bother you. Because if you want to know the maximum books written against any human being in the world, it is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if you say that people who speak against a human being, that person, high chance of being bad, then Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knows Billah. 
against him the maximum of certain. That doesn't mean now that he's bad. He did his job selflessly. He was the best messenger. So when they could not spare Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who are you and me? So we should not be bothered what others say, but we should judge ourselves on the basis of Sunnah. I always tell a person. But on the other hand, you may find people who are really using Islam for their fame, for their money. Many, hundreds of them. They take the name of Islam and they make money. They take the name of Islam and for the old ulterior motives. So, as an individual Muslim, we should assess ourselves. And for assessment, don't look at the, what human beings say. Look at Quran and the Sunnah. That's the reason whenever we have discussion, when we have a meeting of the Dais and the co-group, etc., I always tell them, keep your base of Quran and Sunnah. What people say is what they say, hear it out. Don't give them a blind ear. But see whether it falls in the category. A people may allege many things. Some people may allege many things which may be right may not be right. But you as a person, sister, as a dai, you have to judge yourself based on Quran and Sunnah. Vasas are bound to come many times from the Satan. As Allah says in Surah Nas, chapter number 114, verse number 1 to 4. It may be from the Satan. It may be a good thing in your mind. It may be a benefit for you for you to improve. Like we realize that when we want to get up for salah, as salah to khairu minna norm, we mentioned the Azan. Salah is the then Satan will say, a bit of time, one hour, one hour is left. Three, four, fifteen minutes more. Again, you want to get up. Forty-five minutes is balance. You pray. Not that you don't pray. But if we're in the forty-five minutes, forty-five minutes now, enough time is there. And half an hour, ten minutes, then time goes up. You hurry, time is up. So these are vasvasas, you know, these are bad vasvasas, evil vasvasas. Therefore, prophets, they pray as early as possible. If you know this hadith very well, the hadith says as early as possible. So then this vasasa will prevent you from falling, except for the yasala, where you're awake. So the thing you realize that, and many times that happens, even during this work, you start to do salah. It happens with every one of us. So they do it with me, and we try, okay, important work is there. So the moment the time is up, we should do salah. As soon as possible. There will be occasions where, of course, you can delay. The Prophet has given permission, so it's not haram to delay. But it is mustab to pray on. So these are the guidelines that we have in the Quran and Sunnah. If you follow and give a thought to the action and the deed based on Quran and Sunnah, then you'll know where do you actually stand. Hope that answers the question, sister. Anybody have any questions? One of the questions was that who has created Allah? Never beginning, never ending. There was the question that who has created Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Normally, I answer this question with a question. I ask people that my friend John, he was admitted to a hospital. He gave birth to a child. Was it a girl or a boy? My friend John. He was admitted to a hospital. He gave birth to a child. Was it a girl or a boy? Can you guess? Can you guess was it a girl or a boy? Can anyone guess was it a girl or a boy? The thing is that Brother John is a man. How can he give birth to a child? So when he cannot give birth to a child, where is the question of it being a girl or a boy? So similarly, the definition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the true God, is He is uncreated. He is not begotten. He is not born. So when you ask me that who created God, the definition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or the true almighty God, is He is uncreated. So the moment I tell you X, Y, Z created God, He is not a true God. So if you know of any God who has a creator, He is not God. So if you say, no, but that God was created by Mr. X, or whatever it is. So that God is not a God at all, because God is uncreated. He's a false God. Therefore, we say in the Shada, La ilaha, there is no God, but Allah, illallah. So here we realize that one of the definitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has no beginning, he has no end. He's uncreated. So the question of anyone creating God can arise. So he's one. So there's only one entity in the full universe, which is uncreated Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything else is created by him. Directly or indirectly. Fine? So here we analyze Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of his sifat is the creator, besides many other that many other attributes here. 
One attribute is creator, means he's the ultimate creator. And he is uncreated. He creates everything. Everything is dependent on him. He is independent of everything and anything. Hope that answers the question. More details. Well, that's the question that which cassette of mine gives more details? If in my video cassette is the Quran God's word, this tape of mine along with the talk and the question and suggestion is for approximately a and a half hours. So this gives more details of this topic. And even this question is asked there. They can hear the answer in more detail. Hope that answers the question. Any sisters have any questions? Asalaamu Alaikum, brother. What is the concept of Yahuwah in Christians and why do they believe in spirit or ghost? And I want to uh, know about the Hyderabad where you given a talk. Sister asked two questions that she wants to know about why Christians call God as Yahuwah, what is the meaning? And about the Hyderabad, last month I had a tour of Hyderabad. As far as the first question is concerned, the Christians, what is the concept of Yahuwah? If you analyze in the Bible, in the Old Testament, one of the names for God is YHWH. It is a Hebrew word. In Hebrew, normally, they don't write the vowels. So if you put the vowels, YHWH, to it, it becomes Yahuwah. And normally, they add a J to it. Like Yunus, Yunus becomes Jonah, alayhi salam. Then they put a J in front of Y. So here, Yehovah becomes Jehovah. So one of the names of God, they say is Yehovah or Jehovah. And the sect in Christianity, which is known as Jehovah's Witness or Yehovah's Witness. So here, this is one of the names of God, YHWH, in the Old Testament, if you realize, that he was called as Yehovah. It is mentioned. So one of the attributes. And they Latinize it, they add a J in front of it, it becomes Jehovah. So that's how they get this word. And there's a sect called as Jehovah's Witness, the Witness to Almighty God. So this is where the word comes from. It is one of the attributes, one of the names of Almighty God in the Bible. That's how you get the name Yehovah. As far as the second question is concerned, that how was my trip to Hyderabad? And Alhamdulillah, so Alhamdulillah, by Allah's help and Allah's mercy, that MashaAllah, the trips that are held now, especially the previous trips in India, and the little trips, alhamdulillah. Every trip is turning out to be better than the previous one, alhamdulillah. And the trip in Hyderabad, mashallah, very successful. In terms of many things, firstly in terms of Dawa, alhamdulillah, where this program was organized in a non-Muslim area, the NTR Stadium. Normally the stadium is not given for, somehow they were able to get permission from the High Court. And they had in a very big uh, ground, though it's called a stadium, it's a very big ground of several acres, of more than 10 acres it is. And it's in a non-Muslim dominated area. And alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, even being non-Muslim area, mashallah, there was a big crowd, the big audience, tens of thousands of people came, mashallah. And here we saw to it, that, which is the policy nowadays, that we give preference first to non-Muslims. And then if time permits, we give a chance for the Muslims to ask a question, during the question answer time. And alhamdulillah, on both the days, there were so many non-Muslims queuing up because of the deadline of 10 o'clock. We were extended 10.30 maximum. Even if we had gone on for a few hours late in the night, 2 or 3 o'clock, I feel only the non-Muslims would not have been asking questions. There was such a big queue, mashallah. So the awareness, mashallah, and the reach of Islam lectures is increasing. It's made to the satellite channel. And it's very pleasing to know that most of the non-Muslims who came they were seeing the program on Saturday. Otherwise, why would a non-Muslim come? And imagine a non-Muslim asking a question in front of 50,000 people, 60,000 people, in such a big gathering. It requires guts. So here we realize that these people have been seeing the program on the satellite channel. And they see there that non-Muslims can ask openly in big audiences. So that gives them the courage here too. Otherwise, imagine a non-Muslim in such a big gathering of Muslims would think 10 times before asking a question. But here you find that a queue of non-Muslims are there. The main reason is because of awareness and that light media, alhamdulillah. So as per se, in that context, alhamdulillah, the trip was very successful. And in the context of Dawa, in the context of Islam, mashallah, one thing very good was that though we find in Islam there are various sects that should not be there, 
the various groups and different organizations. But in Islam, we should be united. As Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number three, verse number 103, wa bihabli lai jamia wa la Hold to the rope of Allah strongly and be not divided. So this trip by itself, mashallah, in terms of the Muslim ummah was successful because all the Muslim came. Mashallah to the program. Whether it be Shia, whether it be Sunni, Hanafi, Shafi, Tabli, Jamaat Islami, Ahle Hadi, Salafi, Mashallah. And all of them supported. And Alhamdulillah, many organizations came together and they made this program successful. Mashallah, it was an occasion where it was a opportunity for me to meet the heads of various organizations, different organizations, different group, mashallah, whether it be jamaat islami whether it be Ahle Hadith, whether it be Barevli, Alhamdulillah. And it was very good impact that the Muslims should be united in this way, which always speak talks, Alhamdulillah. So that was a very positive aspect. This was one of my most successful trips in India, in terms of all the Muslims, mashallah, coming on the same platform to support such a cause. Normally we find that when one group organizes, some group may watch but may not support, so Alhamdulillah, here we realize that mashallah, if a person is on strictly on Quran and Sunnah, we find that most of the people, Alhamdulillah, come. And if it's done with hikmah, with wisdom and beautiful preaching, I had to extend my trip for a couple of days more to see to it that I meet the people, Alhamdulillah. And it was very successful in terms of Isla as well as in terms of Dua. Hope that answers the question, sister. Are there any questions on sister's side? Asalaamu Alaikum, brother. Wa Alaikum Asalaam wa Barakatuh. Uh, the question was, uh, why do Christians believe in Spirit and Holy Ghost? Sister asked earlier that why do the Christians believe in Holy Ghost and Holy Spirit? Because it's mentioned in the Bible. Like in the Quran it's mentioned. Even it's mentioned in the Bible. There are various verses in the Bible which speak about the Holy Spirit and the Ghost. But unfortunately, the Christians, most of them, not all, they also believe in the concept of Trinity. Trinity means God is three in one. They believe Father as a God, Jesus Christ the Son of God, and the Holy Spirit. They believe in Trinity. The Holy Spirit, there's no problem. But saying that is a part of God, that is God itself, that's a problem. And if you open the Bible, you will find that the word Trinity does not exist anywhere in the Bible. If you open the Bible, the word Trinity is not there in the Bible, but the word Trinity is there in the Quran. If you read the Quran, the word Trinity is there. It's mentioned in the Quran in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 171. It says that, mm -hmm. Don't say Trinity. This is top it better for you. So Quran says, don't say Trinity. It's further repeated in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 73. They are doing kufr. They are blaspheming those who say that God is three in one. God is one in three. That Trinity. So Quran in no less than two places speaks about Trinity, but says it is wrong to say that. If you open the Bible, the word Trinity does not exist. The verse which is closest to Trinity in the Bible is the first epistle of John, chapter number five, verse number seven, where it says, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. So this is the closest to the Trinity, therefore there are three that are recorded in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And this verse, if you read the Revised Standard Edition, Revised Standard Version of the Bible, revised by 32 Christian scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 different Christian cooperating denominations, these people say that this verse of the Bible, the first epistle of John, number five, verse number seven, is an interpolation, is a concoction, is a fabrication, and they've thrown this verse out of the Bible. So the verse which is closest to unity is no longer there in the Bible. So in terms of Holy Spirit, there's no problem, but considering it to be a part of God or being one in three, three in one is totally haram in Islam. Hope that answers the question, sister. Any sisters have any questions? Assalamu alaikum, brother. Wa alaikum uh, assalam, brother. Brother, a Hindu sister, uh, like uh, while uh, talking to her, I couldn't convince her regarding uh, reverting. She was telling we Hindus, we don't uh, convert people. And then I had to keep quiet. I said, I told her about the uh, concept of hell and heaven and all those things, but she was not convinced. So I had to convince a Hindu regarding reverting or converting people. Sister, so has a question that when she spoke to the Hindu, she says, we Hindus don't 
convert or revert. Can you convince him? So he said, become a Muslim and then revert, so you'll no longer be a Hindu. So where's the question of you doing that? <laughs> the thing is there that you tell the person that you submit your will to God. And use the verse of the Quran, Imran chapter 3, verse 64, Ta'ala kalmizum savayim bayna baynakum. That come to common terms, ask me, ascend you. Which is the first term, Allah na'buda illa Allah, that you worship none but Allah. So proof to the Hindu from the scriptures, that, okay, you're Hindu, you're a practicing Hindu, do you believe in Hindu scriptures? They say yes. So proof from the Hindu scriptures, God is one, that there's no idol worship, etc. Once you do this, then you say that Almighty God has got no images, idol worship is wrong. From their scripture, keep the Quran aside, from their scriptures. Once you prove that, then tell you to submit to the Almighty God. They say, yeah, submit. So a person who submits will to Almighty God, Arabic is called the Muslim. Muslim in Arabic means a person who submits the will to Almighty God. So you tell the Duble God, yes, do you submit the will? Then you're a Muslim. No, I'm not a Muslim. So let me not submit the will to God. If you tell a person that do you submit the will to God, yes, then you're a Muslim. A Muslim is a person who submits to God. Now, whether he's a true Muslim or fake Muslim, that's secondary. Whether he truly submits to a true God or fake God, that you go secondary. So you tell the person, you believe in God, I believe in God. Do you submit the will? Yes, then you're a Muslim in Arabic. So I'm not a Muslim. I mean, not submit will to God. So if you ask the person, are you man that Then you're honest. No, I'm not honest. See, a person never say that. Are you man that? If you ask in Hindi, he says yes. That means honest in English. He says yes. Because they understand English and Hindi. So now you tell them in Arabic, for a person who submits will to God is a Muslim. Fine? So simply that way, a person who lives in India is a Hindu. That way, I'm a Hindu. That is geographically. But if you say Hindu who does idol worship, then I'm not a Hindu. So similarly, if you submit your will to God, you're a Muslim. And then you have to prove to that Hindu what is the true concept of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, true concept of God. And you can refer to my video cassette, similarities between Hinduism and Islam, which speaks in great detail. So give this cassette to her, this tape to her, let her think. But how to give the last push is important. Push, last push. Otherwise, you do your job, but you don't have the last push. So how to give the last push is important, and choosing a word is important. Normally, therefore, when I quote Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 19, in the Dina, in the Islam, the only religion acceptable in the sight of God is submitting a will to God. So no one has a problem. If I say the only religion correct in the sight of God is Islam, then people have a problem. So you know what Islam is the problem. But if I say the only religion acceptable in the sight of God is submitting a will to God, very good, no problem. But if I say in the sight of God, the only acceptable is Islam, then it's a problem. Islam, Muslim is a problem. So you translate it, let them come in between, and then let them come toward Islam. And inshallah, it will be, as Allah says in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 8, Utkhla fisal mikafa, and do some wholeheartedly. First, part by part, and then inshallah, you'll find that people are entering, alhamdulillah. So how do da'wah with hikmah is important. This is hikmah. Sometimes you have to give a slight push, sometimes a big push. Sometimes you have to give them a hand. Sometimes you have to give a stick. So depending what is required, that is the hikmah sister. Hope that answers the question. Wa'akhir da'wana alhamdulillah bil alamin. Ya Rabbu innaka anta salam Minka salamu ilayka salam Ya Rabbu innaka anta salam Minka salamu إليك السلام لأمرك يرجع أمر الأنام بين يديك قلوب الأنام لأمرك يرجع أمر الأنام بين